Welcome to the second part of our plenary session. Uh, first talk will be given by uh, Rich Benke, and this is memorial talk about Bill Gordon. I think most people know who Bill Gordon was. I sure hope you do, and if you're a new student, you'll find out. He was kind of the father of uh, the Incorn and Scatter Radar business and uh, the father of the Arecibo Observatory and my advisor at Rice University. There's, I can go through this, and this is going to take very short time. He's obviously a, a very famous and, and great person. And, and as you can see here, he uh, taught at Cornell. Then he moved to Rice, where he was dean of sciences and engineering, dean of natural sciences, vice president, provost, acting president, almost everything at Rice when, when he was there. And he was a member of the National Academy of Sciences and the National Academy of Engineering, which is something very, very few people do. So that's, that's that kind of uh, remembrance. But I have another one, too. And that's a, kind of a more personal view. Uh, Bill Gordon was a visionary. He was a teacher, mentor, my friend. And he left an incredible legacy on this whole field. Uh, I'm not going, well, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to go through this slide because you're going to have to just bear with me here. Actually, Bill Gordon not only built Arecibo, he thought of the whole idea with the Booker-Gordon uh, equation. Uh, Henry Booker was his advisor at, at, at Cornell, and Henry Booker was also a Ratcliffe uh, student. And so uh, it goes right back to him. But when Gordon was, was uh, a, a Cornell University prof, he and Henry Booker came up with this equation that said, if you, uh, we want to measure electrons out in the ionosphere. And how do we do that? Well, if we send up, this is the amount of power received, and this is the amount of power transmitted. And this is the cross-section of an electron, which is 10 to the minus 28 in MKS units. So uh, no matter what's in here, if you multiply by 10 to the minus 28 at the end, you're not going to get a very big number. So the amount of power that's going to be returned uh, isn't going to be very big. This is the gain of the antenna. And so you're going to need some huge gain for the antenna, as well as some uh, pretty powerful transmitter. So Gordon showed that uh, with the existing technology they had back then, uh, like all you needed with a megawatt transmitter, and that could be done, but then all you needed was about a 300 meter in diameter antenna. Uh, wait, a 300 meter in diameter antenna? That's a kilometer in, in circumference. Uh, there, where in the world would you find such a thing? Uh, whoops. Well, he found it. This is in Arecibo, Puerto Rico, the Karst country. Right here is a little tobacco farm. And this is a natural sinkhole, about 1,000 feet in diameter and one kilometer around. And he managed. I have these a little out of order. He, am, he managed to talk people into actually building this thing uh, based on his equation. Uh, he talked to the people at, 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 at ARPA, which became DARPA, and he admitted in an interview, we were taking a pretty big leap. And I didn't know whether I was a, they didn't know whether I was a crackpot or really had something. Uh, and he was told, actually, it couldn't be done. But, we were in the position of trying to do something that was impossible and it took a lot of guts. We were young enough that we didn't know we couldn't do it. And a lot of you are out there who are in that position. So there it is, how it looked in 1960. And another great quote from Dr. Gordon, if you dream, dream big. And here he is at the Arecibo site, pouring over some blueprints with Arecibo sketches in the background. And, uh, he conceived of the possibility, sold the idea, found the appropriate place, supervised the construction, and he was uh, actually the first director. So nothing was made. In 1958, he has the idea, convinces DARPA to give him money in 1960. Uh, and in 1963, uh, it was completed. And here's a picture of it in 1963. And Dr. Gordon was the first director. For the first two years, he actually Op, he, was, he directed the operations, and, 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 uh, and it began to really pour out some great science. 
There's a picture of Dr. Gordon with uh, another famous incoherent scatter radar guy and scientist, Tor Hagberth, uh, in the very early days. So we know those. A lot of people know that, uh, of course, Bill Gordon was essential for Arecibo, did everything from concept to, to uh, operation. But he was also, when he, when he moved to Rice, uh, and I, was, I, I became a graduate student in the, in, in the late 60s, and uh, was not too happy with my present experiment, which was getting balloons, uh, finding balloons that were coming down. And, I saw a poster in the in the in the hallways, and and uh, and and it was this picture of this beautiful instrument in Puerto Rico, and I didn't like you know the thought of spending another summer in Houston, not so hot, and it was that hot, and and so I went up to Gordon after his talk, and I said something like, "You mean if I kind of pretend I'm interested in ionospheric research, I can spend the summer in Puerto Rico?" and uh, he said, yeah, but you should improve your attitude a little. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, I have some slides that I got from Anthea Coster. And, and it shows some of the early graduate student days. It shows that when we were, when we were there at graduate students, uh, this is actually Anthea, uh, who is uh, one of our stalwarts here in Cedar. And as she said, the space physics department, we got little sleep, lots of work, and we were often surrounded by fellow sufferers. And when the semester ended, we had to spend the, the summer in Rice, where at, in Houston, and the temperature sometimes hit 104 degrees. And, and it's, if you've been to Houston in the summer, it's, it, there's other better places. And so Dr. Gordon came to our rescue, and we saw the wonders of Arecibo, and actually, the Rice students all, was, all thought that the Arecibo summers were really nice. The Cornell students thought they were a little warm. Uh, we worked really hard, even though this picture doesn't suggest that. We did go on some hikes. That's uh, Frank Juth, who's a Gordon student, and uh, I don't know who he is. And, and Frank, Fred Fry, Anthea is here. We took a lot of hikes. And uh, again, Frank and Truman Ganguly. This is a, a great picture. We walked across the whole island, had a, had a ball. Uh, some of us met our future spouses, like Anthea and actually myself, and some of us brought our sp spouses along, like David Coco. Uh, we learned to think about art in different ways. Dr. Gordon was really interested in art, and, and he pointed out that uh, some of this geometric shapes are really kind of uh, very cool, and, and, and I began to look at it that way, and, and, and you know, he's right. This is a, Arecibo is not only a fantastic instrument, in many ways, it's a beautiful instrument. We learned about different cultures, and some of us even learned some Spanish. Uh, I, I, I learned a little bit of Spanish. I can, but there's other words here that you need to know. That you need to know cerveza. Uh, I, I won't, no, I won't go into all the words you need to know. Uh, and we had life in the tropics was great. We learned about uh, having pista with octopus. That's not always always that, that common back then. We sailed in catamarans, flew in small planes, snorkeled, had rum, and we drove to the HF facility at night where Dr. Gordon did a lot of his work and when he came to us and, uh, and went by rows and rows of sugar cane. Some of us even got married and Gordon was at our weddings. There's Anthea getting married. This isn't the, I wasn't really in this suit. This was at another wedding I wore. <laughs> I, I, I was the best, this was actually, I was the best man at this poor folk. Uh, anyway, it's a great, everybody loves the tie. And during my wedding, which was the reception, which was actually held at the pool at the Arecibo Observatory, uh, we, uh, the steel band, we ran out of money. I was a graduate student, and the steel band was about ready to go, and nobody really wanted to go. So Dr. Gordon chipped in and paid 50 bucks for the steel band to keep playing for three more hours. Doesn't sound like a lot. 1969, you multiply about a factor of 10 or so, and you can imagine <clears throat> coming up with $500. That's, so I really appreciated that. That was terrific. But that's the kind of guy he was. Most of us graduated. There's a picture of Auntie on her graduation with Bill Gordon and his first wife, Elva, uh, who was a classic woman as well. Uh, and here are some of the students. I think all of the students who got doctoral degrees from, from Dr. Gordon, Herb Carlson, who was the chief scientist at AFOSR, 
myself, Anthea, David Coco, Frank Juice, Lewis Duncan, who's the president of Rollins College, and Wittenberg College is a prop. And so it goes, and of course, Vince Wickwire is, is well known to this community as well from USU. So Dr. Gordon was a, a great advisor and a great teacher and friend. He was always available to us. He, 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 never, he wasn't the kind of guy who ever told you the answer and how to do anything. He just kept pushing you until you finally had to say the right answer, you know. And when he came, he came to Arecibo, even when we were down there, and he was, I mean, always available to his students. By the way, this guy was like, when I was getting my PhD, he was acting president of the university. So he was, when you wanted to just walk into his office, that was okay, even though he was acting president. Uh, and so he also took his research really seriously and came down to Arecibo and, and was work involved with uh, ionospheric heating. And we had this heater out in the, uh, out in the fields near the, near the coast. And, and he always took the midnight to three in the morning shift. And uh, that's the kind of guy he was. But he taught us the importance of collaboration. Uh, he always liked team, team experiments. And that's something we all learned. He reached out to international students in, as well, I mean, and international scientists. But he, later, when he became the uh, foreign secretary for the National Academy of Sciences, he set up uh, this inter interchange with, with Russia well before it was all that popular uh, to do uh, plasma studies of the uh, ionosphere the, the, based on his, some of his heating work. And, uh, and we all love Dr. Gordon. That, that's the truth. We all remember him as, uh, as kind of our father. When you were around him, you felt good. Yeah. He had a great quote here that, uh, may each of you experience the passion of creation as you discover something new, as you do your doctoral research. And may you experience that same deep passion a few more times in your professional careers. That, he said that on his 40th anniversary, but he, he really had a passion for creation of new and, and fundamentally new and exciting things. And it, obviously, he did that with Arecibo. Uh, so he was a great guy to be around. And we, we really do miss him. But you know, there's something else that I wanted to get into a little bit, too, besides him being the, the uh, the father of Arecibo and, and this wonderful uh, teacher. I mean, there are no former students of, 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 of Dr. Gordon. We all, all felt that we were continually his student, and I'm still his student now. But there's, a, there's this other aspect, and the legacy of Bill Gordon is far beyond all those things, really. He, he, he actually, the real legacy is the entire field of incoherent scatter radar. Without Bill Gordon, this entire field wouldn't exist. He brought it into existence. He took it from a small you know, idea that he sold to the military and got it out to the university community, popularized it with this fantastic Arecibo instrument, and, 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 and created a field of incoherent scatter. So all the incoherent scatter radar facilities actually owe their, owe their existence to Bill Gordon, uh, including Hikamarca, Arecibo, Millstone Hill, Chattanooga, which was actually moved then to Sonderstrom, uh, the European incoherent scatter radars, uh, Tromso and Longyearbyen, a whole, whole array of incoherent scatter radars all over the world. And of course, our new prized incoherent scatter the, the, at Pfizer in, in, Fair, in Fairbanks, uh, which is, uh, we are going to hear about right after this talk, uh, and the new one at Riser in Resolute Bay. And so all of these, facilities would not have been, in, would not have existed without Bill Gordon. Uh, so the incoherent scatter radars, they're the most powerful instruments on Earth for measuring all these ionospheric parameters that we need. And we need these as we, as we move forward in the new CEDAR directions to understand all the aeronomy, the system science. Uh, these all there, all these owe a great deal to Bill Gordon. So I just wanted to end with a thank you to Dr. Gordon for his creativity and vision, and for his great teaching and mentoring and friendship, and for all the frontier science that he's enabled. And with that, that's it. Thank you.